everyone. Welcome to our next podcast. We've got a podcast titled Path to Net Zero, Unveiling, Unveiling Sustainability Futures with Net Zero Sustainability Limited. We've got Dr. Tarsin Chowdhury here. Tarsin, can you share your career background and what inspired you to start Net Zero Sustainability Limited? So, hi, Tim. Um, firstly, thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to be on what I hope will be an interesting podcast. Um, yeah, so I'm a chemical engineer by background, and I've been working in this sustainability space since 2004. So uh, as one of my nephews says, I've been working in it before it became cool. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I was very bored, frankly speaking, during the second year of my undergraduate degree. And uh, and I wanted to to take a year out, but uh, rather than going and working in McDonald's or, or somewhere like that, my parents were insistent that uh, I went and did something related to um, to what I was reading. So I spent a year in the water industry in a company um, just outside of London, and that's when I really caught the bug for research. So I came back. All of my friends had graduated, so I was in a class of people that I didn't really know, but I suppose the advantage was I really got my head down and uh, and, and studied a bit. And then I applied for a PhD, uh, which I was uh, doing, or which I did rather, um, at Imperial College in London. So after I finished my PhD, I stayed on, I did some postdoc works and some um, lecturing as well. And this was at the time where BP were going through their rebranding exercise. So uh, going from British Petroleum to Beyond Petroleum, a new logo and everything else. And so that really prompted me to want to get into this sustainability space. I was faced with the classic sort of chicken and egg situation whereby I was applying for jobs in sustainability and people were asking what level of experience did I have. And of course, I didn't have any experience in that because I didn't have a job. So I then decided to go and um, read for a master's, which was at the University of Oxford, and it was in environmental change and management. And that's when I started learning about carbon and carbon credits and everything mm-hmm. else. And, and that's really what started my career in in this particular space. Um, In terms of forming Net Zero Sustainability Limited, um, I, at the time uh, of of just before forming the company, I was living and working in Germany for a a German certification company. Uh, And then, of course, Brexit happened. And as a result of that, there were various changes with regards to who could live and work in Germany if they were a British citizen and everything else. So I thought the best conclusion would be for me to leave the German company. Uh, I then sort of formed Net Zero Sustainability, which was a silver lining in a very dark cloud known as Brexit, and uh, formed the company with other two other very trusted, experienced friends. And so I suppose, yeah, it was one of the, the limited positives that, that came out of Brexit. Oh, thank you so much. Um, how do you define net zero in the context of climate change and sustainability? Yeah. So in simple terms, net zero refers to the balance between the amount of greenhouse gases produced and the amount removed from the atmosphere. So in order to reach net zero, you need to ensure that there's no more added greenhouse gases added than taken away. So maybe a good analogy would be a bath. So imagine you have a bath and you start filling the bath with water um, and you also put the plug hole in the bath as well so the water Mm -hmm. doesn't flow out. So the amount of water in the bath depends on how much water is coming out of the taps and how much is um, prevented from leaking uh, or going out of the bath with regards to the plug hole. So when the amount of water going in is the same as the amount coming out, so it's balanced, then essentially you have net zero um, in the bath, but that relates to greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, thank you. Could you explain, uh, basically, you've just explained the bath analogy to describe um, net zero, but what key services uh, does Net Zero Sustainability Limited offer to assist businesses in achieving net zero? So 
the concept of net zero is based on a carbon footprint. So before you can do anything in terms of developing a strategy, you must understand what your carbon footprint is. And in sort of simple terms, the carbon footprint of an individual or of a company in this particular case is the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that are released into the atmosphere as a result of the company's activities. So let's take a, an example. Let's take a manufacturing company. They could be manufacturing a cup. I have a cup here and they could be manufacturing a cup. So when you calculate the carbon footprint, you're looking at it from three different aspects. You're looking at the the downstream, the upstream, and the midstream. So the upstream emissions are the emissions related, for example, to the raw material which is used to make that cup. The midstream emissions would be related to the actual operations of the factory or the site where the cup's being made. So for example, gas consumption, electricity consumption, anything like that. And then the, the downstream emissions are the emissions related to the shipping of the cup from the factory to the customer. And in order to capture the carbon footprint, you need to have a sum of the upstream, midstream, and then downstream emissions. So that's one of the, uh, the key activities which we offer as a company. We help companies calculate their carbon footprint and then build that into a strategy which they have maybe in terms of achieving net zero. OK, thank you so much. So how does your company approach the challenge of climate change through its consulting services? So I, undoubtedly, climate change is is the world's biggest intergenerational challenge. Um, and during my 20 year career in this field, I'm really pleased to see that the public awareness of this topic has really grown through the likes of Greta Thunberg, um, Generation Z and everyone else out there. They really understand what, what all of this is. So I think solving the challenges of climate change requires multiple stakeholders, such as governments, businesses and us as individuals. Um, so we fully understand that we're a very small cog in the wheel. Uh, but I genuinely have to say it's a real privilege to be working in this field yes. and to help our clients play their part in mitigating the effects which their businesses have on climate change and which ultimately is to the benefit of their children, our children and for generations to come. Fantastic. So in what ways uh, does uh, do you help businesses optimise energy management for sustainability? So the use of energy has a direct link to carbon emissions and also finance. So the link in carbon emissions is because it's as a result of, of using energy that we generate carbon, which is then released into the atmosphere. And obviously energy is a commodity and it's something that we have to pay for. So if we're able to reduce the energy consumption of a business, Yes, it will inevitably be reduce carbon emissions and ultimate, ultimately increase the bottom line in terms of the financial performance. Now, what we know is there's a lot of ongoing geopolitical events at the moment, which yes. has caused global energy prices to increase substantially. So this is even more important to understand what a company's energy use is and how it can be reduced. So in terms of understanding energy use, you have to map. The, the use itself and you do mapping by carrying out audits so our business okay. offers two types of of energy audits as it were so you have a very light high level audit where you go into a customer's facility you look at where the high energy use is is being uh is being or the energy is being used there and then essentially you look at ways of saving that energy and providing the customers with some sort of uh, financial understanding in terms of payback times. What a client often then does is they say, OK, well, we understand there are 20 recommendations from the report. Let's focus on five and let's do a real deep dive into those. Then we offer what's called an investment type uh, grade type audit where you go into an awful lot of detail, but specifically focusing on certain elements. So a client may decide that they want to go from a, a gas boiler, boiler to an electric boiler. So you then spend an awful lot of time just focusing on that one element 
and you come out with a, a really good understanding around the financial side of things, which ultimately goes to the CFOs of these companies for them to make a decision with regards to how to proceed. Thank you. OK, so what role uh, does sustainable finance and reporting play in a company's journey towards net zero? So I think what's very clear is whether you are a company or country, and it's also important to state that countries also have net zero targets. Sure. Um, you need money to do this. Um, and the finance itself generally comes from the debt capital markets. So there was a, there's a report out there called the State of Climate Report, which was uh, based on information in 2021. And they reported that five trillion US dollars worth mm -hmm. of capital will be needed by 2030 to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. Okay. There's another organization based in London called the Climate Bonds Initiative. Uh, they've been reporting uh, the issuance of climate bonds and green bonds since 2014. And they've said that since that date, $2.1 trillion of green bonds have been issued. And in January 2024, so just last month, the issuance itself was $17.3 billion. Wow. So what we've noticed is that over the past decade or so, there's been an increasing appetite for companies and countries to issue green financial products, whether they're green bonds, climate bonds, sustainability linked bonds or green loans. And all of these financial instruments have one thing in common, and that is there are certain parameters which are linked to the interest rate, and those parameters right. are all around sustainability. Right. So due to the appetite for investors such as pension funds to enhance their own ESG credentials, you often find that the interest rates on green issuances, so green bonds, climate bonds, are much lower than the traditional vanilla bonds, as they're known. Right. And often these green instruments are oversubscribed in terms right. of the number of people that essentially want to invest in these bonds. So as an organization ourselves, we um, we help companies generate the documentation which they need in order to, to raise bonds. But on the other side, we also have an assurance business to our company or an assurance side to our business. So we can also provide third party assurance around the, the effects, the positive effects from a sustainability perspective, which the issuance of those bonds have actually made in terms of the, the technology or the projects which they're financing. OK, thank you so much. So from your perspective, what essential sustainable resources should businesses focus on? Um, it's it's very difficult to, to sort of say there's no one size fits all for, for all businesses. But I think businesses should look at, at themselves, look at their goals, what they want to achieve, and then look at the resources uh, which which they have and which they can deploy yes. in order to generate the maximum sort of benefit for them. Um, th there's another topic as well. That there's this general sort of misconception out there that it's only large companies that can co contribute to climate change. Um, my view on that is I do not agree. So, for example, in the UK, um, we 99% of the business population are actually SMEs, small, right. medium enterprises. Sure, sure, um, sure. So you could argue that the impact which they have on climate change is yeah. uh, is very, very significant. And yeah. therefore, a lot of attention should be put on them in terms of understanding their carbon emissions and then reducing their carbon emissions. So for our company, we, we have some very large clients, but we also work with a lot of SMEs. And we've developed bespoke services for those SMEs. One of them um, is related to going beyond carbon neutrality and becoming carbon positive. So we offer services to SMEs, which we call carbon positive solutions. And there's yeah. three levels of carbon positivity, gold, silver and bronze. And the companies can achieve the different levels depending on the carbon emissions, which they've actually reduced in, on an annual basis. OK, that's very fascinating. So uh, a related question, how do you tailor your services to meet the unique sustainability needs of different businesses? Yeah, again, um, every business is different and, and their particular requirements themselves are different. Uh, the motivations, the different stakeholders that they have. 
So I think as a team, we spend a lot of time listening and really trying right. to understand, trying to get to know our clients and what they're really looking for and what their real drivers are, as well as their budget. So for us, we're not interested in going in, working with a client uh, on a one time basis and then sort of saying goodbye to them, as it were. We want to build long term, sustainable relationships with our clients as well. Sure, sure. Uh, and, and the other thing is we I know this may sound a little bit corny, but we do really enjoy sleeping well at night and therefore the advice that we provide our clients is uh, is always very ethical it's it's honest yes. if we are not able to deliver a particular service um rather than convince the client that we can uh, we're more than happy to say look this is beyond the realm of our current capability but having been in the business for 20 years and again the two partners that we have in our company as well uh, they've been in the business for even longer than I have um, so we have very strong networks of people who can help our clients if we can't directly help them uh, we trust those partners of ours and we're more than happy to sort of recommend them to our clients should their skill set be more um, relevant to, to the requirements of the client. OK, uh, what are, are your vision and future goals for promoting sustainability in businesses through Net Zero Sustainability Limited? So our business has offices in the UK, Germany, Singapore and China, and we're getting a lot of traction in those countries and, and the wider regions around those countries as well. But for us personally, we were so pleased to see the successful outcome of the last COP in Dubai. Yes. And we strongly believe that the Middle East market um, is is very open and, and, and very much there for development. And the Middle East as a whole can play a very big role in helping to combat the challenges of climate change. Uh, there's a lot of petrodollars available there, which companies are putting in to sustainable mm. initiatives. So we believe there's very strong growth potential in the UAE and the Middle East as a whole. Um, and we're looking to tap into that growth potential either directly or or with partners. Um, we're exploring the opportunity of opening an office in Dubai, uh, but that That's depends on, on what opportunities we have there. And I think another continent where there's some real opportunity as well is Africa. Oh, yeah. So we have clients in uh, the DRC, in Nigeria, in Kenya. And we're looking at growing the business and the opportunities we have there, because generally speaking, it, we, we find a lot of entrepreneurial people there who understand the impacts of climate change. They can see the impacts on a sort of daily basis in terms of the droughts and, and the other sort of climatic events which you see there. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of climate finance going into Africa as well. Um, we're, we're working with certain um, development agencies in Africa really? who, who want to deploy climate finance and we're offering either consultancy or our assurances services to them as well. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tyson. It's been really fascinating talking to you and hopefully we'll do different podcasts in the future. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thanks very much, Tim, and thanks for your time. Have Bye -bye. a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.